The feedback I got from my last tutorial was, well, surprising. I didn't think I'd help as much people as I did. I said in the last video, at least I think so, that I would make a video following up to make a part 2 or something like that. So here's part 2. For the advanced tutorial SFM thing, yeah. After this, I'll be making a follow-up with how to edit a poster in the Photoshop. Okay, so last time we went over basic concepts like rim lights and not making posters look like stock animations. And, you know, some random detail adjustments. So let's go over most of the stuff that I missed. Anyway, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna start throwing tips at you. Tip number one. No basic art things. Now, I'm not going to go too much into this, but uh, to be an SFM artist, you need to follow a couple things that exist in normal art stuff. Or techniques, or whatever they call it. Like matching the colors. If the main object is similar to the background, you probably don't want to use that background. Because if it's too similar, the two objects are going to be blending into each other, and I don't think you want that. Also, make sure you're somewhat balancing your posters. Like, if there's, like, a huge, like, object on one side, and there's nothing on the other side, that's a problem. Try to balance each side perfectly. You can measure the size by how much detail it has on both sides, to be simple. Tip number two. Understand colors. My friend, the Freaky Master, likes to make his posters with less saturation. I personally think it gives it a good look, but it also might restrain different styles of emotion. But that's just me. He does this because using too much saturation makes your posters look... Uh... I mean... It's not like I've ever done this. Okay, so you can make good colors, but don't overdo it. Tip number three. Actually pay attention to your lighting. Just make sure you aren't using colors that you can literally see as an SFM light. Like, that marks a beginner poster instantaneously, unless you're doing something specific. Tip number four, the power of perspective. So remember in the tutorial I stretched that head out? Well, I guess I should have elaborated on that a little bit more. You see, that's actually a very abusable technique. Much more than I made apparent. My friend Miku is a better SFM artist than me, currently, and he uses the power of perspective a lot in his posters. Basically, you stretch out bones so the camera has an optical illusion of where that bone is. I don't really know how to describe it well, but you get the point. Try that out. It's hard to understand. I still don't get it too much, but don't beat yourself over it. It's really hard to perform anyway. Tip number five, SFM is ripe for abuse. Well, that's an awkward statement. What do you mean by this, you ask? Well, unlike other programs, SFM can't create new models like Blender or Maya. However, people have been known to abuse models in ways to create completely new items. Using the sizing tool to resize any model to any, you know, reasonable... Yeah. Also, there are other fancy ways of retexturing and recoloring models. For an example, Uberchain is known for turning things like rocks into cakes and other insane things, like turning NG and some other things into a girl. But because I'm a lazy person, I like to use add-ons that recolor things and just size things up. It doesn't work as well as what she does, but it works enough. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video where I will make a poster using Photoshop. Probably a lot of people don't know how to do that. Also, did you know that if you hold shift while on an object, it'll pull that object to the ground?